Okay, now we will solve the Mr. Exam questions about the section one, chapter two, which is about definition of talk. The first question is, if the talk required to loosen a nut on a wheel, it has a magnitude of 40 Newton meters. So this is the talk. What minimum force must be exerted by a mechanic at the end of 30 centimeter range to loosen the nut? Question is about the force, calculate the force. So at the end of a third centimeter range. So this is, you know, the ranges are used to loosen the nuts. Let me draw a nut in here, something like this. So you are going to rotate it by using a range. Range has some, something shape is like this. So it is an arm. And the axis of rotation is the nut. So it's a distance from nut to the end is given as, it is the length of the range, 30 centimeter distance. 30 centimeter is equal to 0 0.3 meters. And what minimum force must be applied to loosen the nut, which means you are going to apply some force in here. You are going to find how much minimum force can rotate this nut. So we know that a torque equation is F times D times sine theta. We are going to calculate F, that's why you should let F alone by dividing sine theta, divide by sine D sine theta, D sine theta has been simplified and you will get that F is equal to torque, required torque, it is a constant number, divided by D sine theta. If you want force to be minimum, because this is constant, you should make the maximum and sine theta maximum as well. So D can be maximum because uh, it's third centimeter, it cannot be longer than that. So D can be over to third centimeter, but sine theta, you should apply the force perpendicular because when force applied per can sign it and gets maximum value, which is one. So for a minimum force, angle must be in here, 90 degree, you should apply 90 degree angle. So this, and also you should do the uh, distance longest, longest distance possible. Then we are going to write the given equations, which uh, required torque is 40 Newton. Torque is needed to rotate these nuts. Distance can be maximum, 0.3. And sine theta, if the angle 90 degree will be 90 degrees, so it can be maximum one. So 40 divided by 0.3, if you use your calculator, you are going to get that force can be 133.3 Newtons. So it's going to be C. Second one is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to a line drawn along the direction of the force. It is the definition of the more uh, lever I. So it is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to a line drawn along the direction of motion, the direction of force. A psi unit of the torque is Newton meters, Newton meter, it is the psi unit of torque because force, torque is equal to Ft sine theta. We know that F Newton, D meters, Newton meters. And, how would the force needed to open a door change if you put the handle in the middle of the door? So uh, assume that uh, he, he, this is the door, you are, this is the axis of rotation of the door, this is the door. You want to rotate this door about this axis. So of course, every door has a, a handle uh, in here at the end. So you apply a force perpendicularly and open, you can open this, rotate this door by a distance of T. But if you put this handle in the middle, so then you are making distance half. So if you put handle in here, you are making distance half here over to but you need the same amount of the torque. If you make a distance how you should double the force. In this case, you can open it because when the distance decreases, force must increase to get the same amount of required torque. So required torque to rotate an object, 
you need a specific number of torque, which is the required torque. This is a constant number. If you are making, normally if it is F times T, if you are making D, D over T, you should double the force. So these, these tools will simplify and you will get again the same amount of the torque to rotate an object. So that's why if you are decreasing the distance to the axis of rotation, half, so then you should double the force twice as much. Which of the following quantities measures the ability of a force to rotate an object around a fixed axis? It is definition of torque. And six question six, an object has the ability to rotate about a specified axis. Torque is which of the following force is equal to zero when x on the object. So x two meter away from the axis, passing through the axis, 0.5 meter away from the axis, x 0.5, meter away from the axis. If the force passes through the axis like this, now let's assume that this is an object, you are trying to get about this point. If the extension of the force passes through the object, this force cannot rotate this object. This is the correct answer. But if x two meter away from the axis, something like this, so then you do like, at any angle, at any angle, you can make it, make it, can change the magnitude, can change, but in all cases, you can produce a torque. Two meter, 0.5 meter, 0.01 meter, 0.01 meter. So then it changes only the magnitude of the torque, but always you can produce a torque. But this force, when it's acting through the axis, so, or acting in here, or acting like this, so it's through the axis, it never produces a torque. Seven, in which of the following situations should the object be treated as a point mass? Point mass, when you are defining the translational motion of an object, if the sentence is talking about the translational motion, it must be treated as a point mass. If the sentence is talking about rotational motion, so it must be treated as an extended object. So wheel rotates, wheel rotates rotational motion, it's extended object, extended object. Ball dropped, dropped from a roof, dropped from a roof, just, just falling down, it's translational motion. So this is point mass, point mass. Ball rolling, rolling. So when it's rolling, it's defined rotational motion. Every point on the object rotates with different speeds, with velocities. So then a ball rolling towards the goal, it's defining the rotational motion. So this is, a, it must be treated as an extended object. Earth rotating about its own. Again, rotational motion, it also must be treated as extended object. So answer is going to be B. Two uniform solid cylinders of equal radii roll down an incline without slipping. The first cylinder has twice the mass of the second cylinder. The torque exerted on the first cylinder is blah, blah, the amount of the exert on the second cylinder. First, we should know that how torque is produced <clears throat> when a cylinder is rolling on an uh, incline. What produces the torque? Let's get this. Let's throw a cylinder. Cylinder is something like this on an incline. So this is the theta, let's say. Or alpha, you can say it. Don't get confused. Alpha, let's say. There are two forces acting on this uh, cylinder when it's rolling down. Uh, one force is gravitational force, always acts down. Second form is normal force because it's in contact with the ground, normal force F, N. Okay. And uh, this cylinder normally turning about this point, which is contact point between the uh, uh, ground between the incline and the cylinder. So then one of the force produces the torque. Well, it's not Fn. Fn is acting to the axis of rotation for a perpendicular, so just line. Fn produces zero torque. It cannot produce torque, but Fg. Fg produces a torque over that distance, which is the radius of the uh, cylinder. 
So if you, you can write the, uh, an equation, but uh, it's not needed in here, the equation, but we know that Fg, gravitational force, uh, produces a torque about this point, and then this cylinder starts to rotate, gravitational force. And we know that gravitational force is proportional to mass, because Mg. If M increases, so if M doubles, force doubles, torque doubles. So the first cylinder is twice the mass of the second cylinder, which means first cylinder has twice the gravitational force of the second one. Also, first cylinder has twice the torque produced, torque produced of the second one. That's why it must be twice as much. So then if I, you can write the equation as well. If this angle is alpha, that angle will be alpha, just mathematically, you can get it if you are good at maths. You can even calculate, write the equation for torque in here, which is equal to Fg. Multiplied by distance from where the force is applied to the axis of rotation, so radius of the cylinder, multiplied by angle between distance and the force, which is sine alpha. So if Fg is mg, is equal to mg or sine alpha, if you double mass, torque doubles. It depends on the mass. Okay, in this case, uh, this is only for this case. I don't don't memorize it. Sometimes students memorize. Oh, torque is proportional to mass. No, torque is proportional gravitational force in here. But gravitational force is proportional to mass for this case when it's moving, rolling down on an incline. This is only for the case when it's rolling on an incline. Okay, so twice as much as the answer in here. If the torque required to loosen a nut that holds a wheel on a car has a magnitude of 5, 51 Newton meters, so this is the torque required, what minimum force must be exerted at the end of the 0.34 meter long range to loosen the nut when angle is 30 degrees? So this time angle is given, uh, so we don't need to choose it. What equation is torque is equal to F, B, sine theta. So F is the question in here, divide by sine theta divide by d sine theta. d sine theta will simplify. F is going to be torque divided by d sine theta. Torque is given, theta is given d. You should get the longest distance to get the minimum force. Longest distance, minimum force. F is equal to torque is 51. Longest distance is the longest distance of the range, so 0.34. You cannot make the range longer than that because range is that, that length. Multiplied by sine of 30. So use the bracket and use your calculator. 51 divided by bracket 0.34 multiplied by sine of 30 degrees, close the bracket, answer is 300 newtons. That force is going to be 300 newtons. Choice is going to be C. And the last question, if each force is six newton, there are three forces acting on a wheel, as you see, F1, F2, F3, but each has a magnitude of six newton. The angle between F1 and F2 is 60 degrees. This angle is given as 60 degrees. So, and the radius of the wheel is uh, one meter. So that radius is one meters, R is equal to one meters. What is the resultant torque on the wheel? We are going to calculate this. So uh, F3 produces zero torque because it's passing through the axis of rotation. If a force passes through the axis of rotation or its extension is passed through the axis of rotation, so it cannot produce a torque. F1 and F2 produces a torque. F1 is acting tangent to the circular, tangent to the uh, wheel. That's why angle is 90 degree, 90 degree. So distance for both forces is the same, which is radius one meters. So we can calculate them. Both are trying to rotate counterclockwise. That's why torque for both of them is positive. Let's calculate torque one, positive. F1 multiplied by distance, which is the radius, sine 90, because it's acting tangent to the circle perpendicular to radius. F1 is both are, all forces are 6 newton. Radius, which is distance is equal to radius one meters, sine 90 is one, so it's positive 6 newton meter. 
So torque pump, force pump produces a torque which is uh, which is equal to six newton. Torque two, force two produces a torque. So the angle between distance and the force. Sometimes students get get this angle sixty. Don't get this angle sixty degree. Get this one or that one. Both can be get, but not sixty. Not sixty. So. Uh, this angle is 30 degrees or that angle is 60, 90 plus 60, 150 degrees. You can get 150 and 30, but don't get 60. 60 is not the angle between the distance and the force. It's not the angle between the distance and the force. This angle is the distance, the angle between distance and the force or this angle. Both have the same sign and sign 30 and sign 150 are equal. That's why if you get 150, degrees, or if you get 30 degrees, you will get the same answer. So generally I'm getting 30 degrees, but I'm going to make a change. Let's get 150, which is the angle between the F2 and D. So it's positive again, F2. R is the distance again, sine 150 degrees. It's also possible to do it this way. F2 is a six Newton, R is one, sine 150. Let's Got it. Uh, sine 150 is what? 150 sine 150. Same as the 30, but I know that it's 0.5. 30 is also, sine 30 also has 0.5. Multiply them all, multiplied by 6, multiplied by 1, is equal to 3, positive 3. So we got, there are three forces, three torques. Net torque is the question. What is the result in torque means torque net? Calculate it. Torque one plus torque two plus torque three. So torque one is, is positive six, torque two is positive three, torque three is zero, some of them is positive nine Newton meter is the answer. It's going to be C. So this is the problem, solution of the problems of, of the chapter, uh, mystery exam questions of section one, chapter two.